Welcome back to the Tigerian Painter. Welcome to my 13,000 subscriber special. I want to say thank you to everybody that helped with this. Of course, it's from your views, your likes, your subscribes, and of course the comments down below, the engagement in the channel helps grow the channel. So today I want to talk about collections. I've been doing this since my 2,000 subscriber special and featuring viewer collections so we can kind of celebrate the brand. And with that, there's a couple more things I want to talk about. Now, on April 1st, I had kind of a fun, funny April Fool's joke. And with that, I didn't really expect this, but I had an outpouring of support from uh, from all of you. So I do appreciate that. And it really feels good knowing that people enjoy my content. The other thing is I'm wanting to do a couple of YouTube videos about YouTube. There's a couple of issues on YouTube, and I'd really like to get it pushed out to the rest of YouTube and have everybody talk about this. But the whole dislike button situation, uh, I have a lot of thoughts on that. I was actually going to make a video saying we should get rid of it, and then they just hid the data. So with that, uh, we can still see our own data, but not everyone else's data. But I can actually show you how to calculate pretty much what people's dislikes are. Also, with that, uh, I'd also like to talk about ads. Ads on YouTube are broken. I think the whole system is broken. I mean, obviously, uh, it's it's a plus and a minus, but it's a necessary evil to maintain a free platform. That's why I'm not on Patreon, because I, I like the, pre, the free platform. I've been on YouTube, or at least using YouTube, since 2005, so uh, pretty much around the beginning. So anyway, without further ado, uh, let me know what you think. If I should be making these YouTube videos, would you be interested in seeing YouTube videos about YouTube just once in a while, once in a blue moon? And also, uh, let me know what you think about these wonderful collections that you're about to see. Okay, there are just so many collections that are blowing me away. How they're displayed, how well, how elegant, how well lit to set up it's great so this is angels collection and he's got quite a few pictures and quite a busy person there so look at all this this is some beast wars and he's got a great background it's well lit it looks amazing fantastic I and mean, if you are a fan of beast wars this looks amazing i love how he did it i love how he did the backgrounds and everything and you could see every figure it's all set up like like perfection almost so here are some of the Combiner Wars, Titan Returns Combiner Wars is what he's saying in here. And so this is just a bunch of Combiners and what was going on in the past. So looking pretty cool. And I know Combiner Wars really was a really fun part of Transformer Collecting Era. So this is another fun display here. So we've got Unicron next to Black Zarak and then we've got an Armada Unicron in there. And I believe this is Pumpkin. So I'm kind of looking at mine and looking at this. This is the Pumpkin. And I'm starting to think that pumpkin one looks really good. That orange really pops. But uh, the minifigures, those are some small figures that are in there. I think it's a kind of combination of different minifigures from here and there. And then the x Boss Perceptor, I believe. So that really showcases the size differentiation. So that looks pretty good. Here we go with some Fembots. And Masterpiece Fembots looking amazing. Now, I want to say a couple things about this. First off, they're all posed. Second off... That looks like the Flame Toys model kit put together, and that is a very nice looking figure. Very nice. In fact, might be better than the other one that's coming aesthetically. So, I also want to say, Takara did a great job on their RC, even though it has flaws, some, some low flaws. It still is a great mold overall, and this is a nice picture. So this is a custom artwork. I don't know if he did it himself, or somebody did it for him, or whatever, but still kind of cool, kind of fun to look at. So this is where it gets fun, or crazy, but this display looks amazing. This is Teletran 1, this is the good old arc. Looking at this is it's just phenomenal. The work that went into the backgrounds is amazing. The damage to the ceiling, uh, I believe that's the X2, X2 version of Teletran 1. And then you have this thing built up to where you have smaller bots kind of climbing up there on the sides of Teletran 1. It, it just looks nice. You see all the figures. You see all the characters. Everyone looks like they have a purpose and is doing something. I love this. And here is the display with no bots. So, so much time, work, effort, and love went into this. This is amazing. This is phenomenal. I love seeing stuff like this. I'm inspired but I'm a little scared to try to take something like this on myself. Angel also showed this picture here of Tesla 1.0 no more. So I guess he's into some customs. I guess he 
did a custom repaint of his Tesla 1.0, which I never thought to do, but that looks awesome. That does. That looks awesome. Here's how he displays his dinos, and that looks great. So, we're getting back to, do you want your dinos in dino mode or bot mode? There's no right or wrong answer to that, so they all look good. And then up top here, we have some, uh, I actually don't know what these recolored ones are up top, to tell you the truth. Now, getting into this picture, this one, I really appreciate the fact that we have a mixture of Masterpiece and G1 cassettes in the bot modes and, well, their main mode, I guess you could say, the non-tape cassette mode. Because some of these figures haven't been made in a Masterpiece representation, KFC didn't do it, and we haven't seen it anywhere else, and so they're all about the same size. If you factor out MMC, they're all about the same size. It looks amazing. It looks good. This is an awesome way to showcase your collection, and I absolutely love it. Here are monster bots busting out of either rock or ice. It could be either one, but probably rock. Looks great. So much time, work, and effort goes into three figures displayed. Here we go with the movie Decepticons getting attacked by all this purple stuff going on. Great looking scene. And we got some some good old Planet of the Apes going on here. Now I'm kind of wondering, where did these Planet of the Apes come from? Who made them? Is that a NECA thing? Angel, thanks so much for your collection. Awesome displays. Getting into Chris's collection here, and he's got a few things going on here. First off, we've got the art. And mixed into some of the other stuff he's got going on right there, that is a very nice little small setup. He does his stuff in small segments here and there, and that's a way to do it. That is definitely a way to make it happen. And this room is soundproof. This is where he works and, and does all of his stuff. He does a lot of acoustical stuff in there. I, I believe he works with music. It's pretty awesome. A couple things with this picture. First off, there are some custom upgrades here. I believe to that Devastator is customized and some uh, upgrade kits added on to it. But looking at this, what really strikes me is the three quintessence, which makes a lot of sense. And I don't always see three quintessence. I really think Hasbro knew the average collector would buy more than one quintessence because they made a whole bunch of them for a while there. So three quintessence makes sense and they're elevated. The middle one's elevated a bit. And then a couple of shark cons and then we've got the alicon in there and all that kind of stuff. So really looks nice. Love that stuff. And then we got the collection above that speaker, that boobin system going on right there. And this looks nice because, because you look at this, you say, well, there's a whole bunch of figures in one space, but you can see them all. So if you can see them all, I think it's a great way to display it and really works out with Masterpiece and kind of a mixture between Masterpiece and Mainline. It works out. Now that was Decepticons. This is Autobots. And I think it looks amazing. Looking at this, you've got all of this team right there on that gigantic speaker, and it works out really well in a space. You can still get your work done. You can look up to this for inspiration. I love that. Thanks, Chris. I love when you send your pictures in. It's awesome. Looking at Gib's collection. Now, Gib has quite a bit going on, too. And there's some stuff going on now. Some future stuff going to happen. But getting into this, this is the Planet X, and he's got in both modes. So... That is very impressive. You don't gotta pick a mode, just buy two. And you can have both modes. This thing does look really good. I mean, I've seen a lot of promo picks and all that stuff, but an in-hand pick like this looks amazing. So, this is an addition to his uh, Beast Wars collection here, and some really great figures already, but the addition of the Optimus Primal, and that's from Trans Arts, and that figure itself probably is an amazing figure. I have not handled it, but look at the paint and all that kind of stuff. Transart does good work and they do really, really great paint. Like the, the highest end paint ever on a Transformer. So it looks really good. Phenomenal. But I love seeing Transformers, but I'm into 46 vintage toy lines and modern representations of those also. So uh, with that, I get excited about, you know, Motu and other things going on. And this is a future project of his. He's going to be putting a display up with these guys. And there's more that he's going to be putting up. I think the Origins is actually an excellent way to get Motu at retail and to make it classic. 
Uh, some of the other stuff's not so classic, but I can't wait to see what he does with this. What's he going to do with that? Something like this, probably. I don't know. Probably more elaborate, even, uh, because there's more options. But this looks great, and I have to admit, I think this is Hot Toys, for the most part, and some other stuff mixed in, Hot Toys, and uh, Classics Motu, and some stuff like that. But, getting into this, who goes some Black Panther? I, I think this is Hot Toys. I don't know 100%, because I don't really do Hot Toys or deal with Hot Toys, because I'm not in the 12-inch scale. But, these look amazing. They look almost lifelike perfect. So uh, that's what I think of when I think of Hot Toys. And then here we go with some of the the modern DC universe and what's going on right there. Which, by the way, I kind of, I, I, I love the Aquaman movie and the Superman movie was sort of fun. But with this, you can kind of, this captures the movies and the representations. It looks good. Where was this pick when I needed to do a comparison shot? <laughs> uh, actually, I had it on the site. But looking at this. Side by side, we got Black Zarak on the left, and we got the Skabnak on the right. And this isn't a picture of two Transformers. This is a, a low-key flex on how he watches the 1986 Transformer movie every day in that theater room. That, that is super slick and sleek, that theater room. Now, I, I think the last one, the last uh, video I made like this, Gibbs submitted a picture and they were all the older versions of the Seekers. Now he's upgraded all of them. And I actually thought he was going to stick with the old ones. Nope. He got all the new ones. And it looks good. It looks good. And it blends well, actually. Because the Rainmakers themselves look so different. We're so used to seeing these things in groups. So you could throw the Rainmakers in different. And it still works well. It still looks good. But overall, I mean, Takara did a good job, and Deformation Space did a good job. Just so many options for so many great displays. And here we go with two grooves and two fuzzes. Here's the weird part. Um, I didn't get a groove yet, and he's got fuzz looking perfectly transformed. So uh, is that thing perfectly transformed? Did you have any trouble with that? That's pretty awesome. And... Right in, right in. That's the Moon Studio stuff going on back there. Getting into some Voltron here and really getting me excited about Blitzway. Can't wait for Blitzway, but that is a super sleek Voltron look here. Uh, we're going to take a deeper dive into that. Uh, here we go with the SOC. And this is getting into a Voltron oversaturation of the market, which I'm talking about soon, but... There's so many great options of Voltron that are either out there now, that are on their way, they're coming, but uh, this still looks great. I mean, nothing really takes away from SLC. It looks pretty good. Here's good kitty mode. That's a, a good kitty lion mode, and that looks great. So this is something I don't do. I really don't have any of my Voltrons displayed in the cat mode, and I think a good Voltron display should have a combination of both, and that's going on here. Here we go with some Bumblebee movie stuff, and I have to say, I really haven't gone in on the Masterpiece Bumblebee movie stuff, but Gib did, and it looks good. So here we go with, I believe that's Toy World in the back, and I don't really know past that, but still looks good. We call this a focus shelf. This is focused on one character, which is Optimus Prime. And there are many different iterations of Optimus Prime on the same shelf. But you see every one of them for like uh, at least 65% of each figure looking pretty good. Great way to display a focus. Wait, a second focus shelf <laughs> of Prime. So... Throwing in the uh, MP44 KO with the silver legs in this here, and the previous one was an official. So all of this mixed together, still looking really good, looking great. And Optus Prime is one of those things that the, the character, and there's so many iterations, that there's just so much fun to celebrate. Such an amazing character. Just an amazing character. I just, it's hard to believe there's a better character in all of the 80s than Optimus Prime. 
I believe this is Mecha Godzilla. I did get a couple of Mecha Godzillas along the way. I haven't opened them up yet, but Mecha does great work with sculpt and and all that kind of stuff. But uh, this looks good. There's just kind of like a a couple of my I guess that's King Kong right there. Am I right? Am I wrong? Thank you, Gib. What a wonderful collection. Thanks for sharing. So we're moving into Mauricio's collection. Now, there's something to be said about a very clean, neat, organized collection and in multiple different spaces. And that's something to be celebrated. It looks great. There's a lot of figures in here, a lot of different iterations of figures, and multiples of the same figure. That makes sense. So here we are in a different space and it all looks good. Obviously this is sort of a, a shelf in an area that you can go around the shelf and there's more living space behind it and all of that kind of stuff. And there is Masterpiece there. There's the Zeta up top along with, I think that's two Zetas if I'm right, of the Unicron. And all of this just spaced out very well. Every figure giving given its own recognition, its own space, and it works, and it looks good. Very elegant. Here's a very well displayed mainline collection. Now, this is all the figures, more or less, and I'll put it out there, in an A stance. But, looking at this, you see every single figure, and you see it well, you can appreciate each figure, the couple of few behind each one are taller than the one in front of them, and it really does work. You've got the big ones up top. A lot of people argue and say the big ones should be on bottom, but I I kind of go with the big ones on top because shelves are a certain size that are built, and then it works taking that space. So overall, all of this, it looks great, it looks amazing, and I actually think he's got a plan for a few future figures coming in. Mauricio, thanks for sharing. Very neat, detail-oriented collection. I love it. We're getting into Micah's collection. A lot of great pictures here. This is his focus shelf of Ricochet and all the different versions that are going on right there. And looks really good. So the fact that, A, there's different levels and elevations going on right here, which is great. Elegant. It's behind glass. Also, going after multiple sizes, scales, and iterations of the same figure make it look more interesting than seven figures that are the same size and scale. These are different sizes and scales. Looks good. Same thing going on right here with more or less an Optimus Prime focus shelf. Throwing an RC in the middle. That's pretty cool too. So we've got the trailer in the back. I think that's a boxed G1 or maybe a reissue. It doesn't even really matter. It just looks good. The feeling of seeing the G1 box and the trailer and all that stuff behind some really great masterpiece figures in the front looks amazing. And at the end of the day, the display only really matters how good it makes you feel. Here goes a big vertical shot of the display and what else is going on in here. Looking pretty cool, pretty fun. And this is the kind of stuff that when you step back and you look at it, this is a, a picture I like to see. I like to see when you see the whole picture of your collection and the display and how it looks. I found this picture very interesting. So this is uh, the pumpkin version, I believe, of the Zeta Unicron. And we've got the pumpkin version of Zeta Unicron stands holding up two different versions of Hasbro's Armada Unicrons in the planet mode. By the way, the Zeta and the Armada are about the same size in planet mode, so it's almost perfect to display it just like this, because you get almost the same effect of having two Zetas. All right, I guess in this case, three. So this is kind of a loner of a picture here showing a Scorponok, Scorponok, and Fast Track. But I love the fact that Hasbro gave us Fast Track. I kind of don't like that it wasn't included, but, you know, it is what it is. The world is the way it is, and it's awesome that we get updated characters and figures of add-ons from the 80s. 
Here's a very strong picture of Masterpiece Transformers bad guys, the baddies going on in Micah's collection. Looks great. Well spaced out. We got the cassettes that are complementing a very nice looking version of Soundwave. And we got a great looking Galvatron and a great looking Megatron. Mixed in a G1 just for fun. Looks great. Micah. Thanks for the pictures. I really, really enjoyed your collection. So getting into Ray's collection here, and we've got an MP21 Bumblebee next to some art. I guess he did this art himself, and pretty interesting. Looks good. We've got a custom flame coming out of Grimlock and attacking what appears to be the newer version of Takara's Starscream. Starscream. And so a lot of fun. Right there. If you don't know about Ray, Ray does a lot of custom work. That that uh, background behind him is a homemade, handcrafted Ray custom. So this Defense War is a custom, and I think it's based on a Make Toys. I might be wrong, but it looks pretty good. I think he made it taller and added some more stuff to it. So looks pretty cool. That's the bad cube version of Gears in there for size comparison, so you can see how it stacks up. So Ray also makes a ton of different backgrounds for his displays and his collections and LED lights put in there. This is just kind of showing the backgrounds he's made and looks pretty cool. One of the older pictures he had was a big scene and we had this, this giant signal head that he had made and put LED lights in it. Is all this stuff was in there? This giant sentinel head. I think he was uh, kind of inspired by one of Hasbro's displays that had a sentinel head in it, and so he made that pretty awesome, really cool. Right, thanks for showing me all your custom work. It's really amazing. A lot of fun to see custom stuff going on. So we're getting into Richard's collection, and I gotta say, this does look very nice, elegant. I got a few things to say about this. First off, I love that you give me the full pic, like I see what your whole display looks like, and then you break it down into smaller pictures so that we can show those off. But I also like the lighting. So I think the best way to display a display is to have a, a dark, like a blacked out room and lighting on your, your display. And that's the only thing you see. So pretty much that's how I operate my office. I only turn my display lights on. I never turn my office lights on, ever. So the thing is, I really relate to this. This looks amazing. Here we go with some modern seekers and these do look really good along with some other figures in the back. So I think that's, I believe that's KFC as the Blitzwing because I mean, we're not gonna see fans toys till what? Next year or 2025. And we've got the MP36 and we have a Nemesis Prime back there. So looking pretty good right here. Very nice. Uh, is that deformation space? Seekers, they look great. They really do. That just all pops. This picture looks a little bit busy, but it still looks amazing because all the elevations, you can see every figure in there and looks awesome. Maybe in the, the Lambo brothers in the back could come up just a little bit, but still. I like that the fact you can see all of these figures in here, you can see them well, and they're very well lit up, so they pop. So I want to talk about this one here. This is a movie setup, and they're all posed with a central angle. So looking at them, they're all angled differently depending on the side that they are on and centrally located. Like I like that they're kind of a centrifugal force there, bringing them to the middle. Uh, it's not circular. Looks really good. Looks amazing. But I'm starting to think, is there something going on with that, that Ultra Magnus? Because it looks like a bit of a metallic look to it. It might just be the light, but it does look like it's shinier than mine. I like that. It looks good. So this is a <laughs> Stunicon shelf. And I gotta say, if you're a Fans Toys only fanboy, you're gonna get mad. You can't do this yet. I'm sorry. It looks great. This looks great. But if you have fans toys only, you just can't do this yet. 
So here's other interests. Now I love Transformers, but I actually get a big kick out of seeing what else people collect. So here we go with some DC Universe and uh, I like they're in the package, neat, organized, looks amazing. A poster in the middle, just kind of all celebrating something that you love. And then down below, we've got below the TV there, we have helmets. And I never even thought about this, but a, a hilt in front of the helmet. That looks cool. That's a great touch. This kind of took me aback a bit about Richard's collection. Wow. Uh, two, three, seven DTOFs to display what I guess is his Hot Toys. So I don't 100% know Hot Toys or maybe so it's Sideshow? Maybe Sideshow? I don't know. Still, it's all well lit, all well displayed. Looks really good. I believe these are all in the 12-inch scale. Cause you kind of see an Optimus Prime in there showing you scales for all this stuff. So looks really good, really amazing. And, and I kind of wonder, how do people that display 12-inch display their 12-inch? And there you go. Looks outstanding. So here's a step back to see everything. Richard, thank you so much for submitting an amazing collection. So well displayed, so well lit, so well set up, so well organized. Thanks so much. Next up, we got a Thunder... T oh, wait. Shameless plug for Wednesday? Wednesday Retro? Retro Wednesday? So next up is Tom's collection. And this collection is unique for... A couple of reasons but there's one major one looking at this you might say wow there's a lot going on here and you have boxed up top sealed in the package in the bottom loose in the middle and it all is arranged to give the exact shelf size to match the figures in scale mixture of mainline and masterpiece and it looks great this looks awesome if I could wake up every day and look at my collection just like this, I'd be pretty happy, actually. But, nope, there's a twist. Every couple of few months, Tom takes all of this down and puts up a whole other collection from a whole other toy line. Say, Motu Classics. Say, Marvel. I think Marvel's next. I gotta keep a record of each time he sw switches them out and how it looks, because this is amazing. Here's a little bit of a different angle on it, and so these comics here, I do believe he reads them all, because Tom is the person that seems to know everything about everything. There's nothing I've asked him about that he did not know. It seems like he knows everything about everything. It's very impressive. I'm into something new, and I'm like, ooh, I just learned this, and he's like, he gives me a rich backstory. It's like, what? <laughs> very interesting. Now, he hasn't opened a lot of this. A lot of this stuff is sealed in the box. Part of it is because he does his whole, um, every two or three months, swaps out his display. And that's that's amazing. He has so much fun doing it, too. It's, it's a lot of joy when he does it. But on the other hand, uh, I was like this for a long time. I didn't open anything. But a lot of the current Titans, I haven't opened myself. So I really understand that. Here's some more of this. And... When you get to the SDCC exclusives and you go through the trouble of getting them, it doesn't really make sense to open them in a way. Sometimes. Uh, that's the way I feel. So, a lot of his SDCC exclusives, he's like, why bother opening them? I just gotta kind of keep them and know I got them. But it looks really great to have the boxes. I love boxes, so I appreciate when they are on display. And this picture here, this angle, so much to love. This is more of what's going on. Yes, all this comes down and all this gets put up with a whole other toy line. Fantastic. I love the G1 display he's got going on right up front there. And I love the HasLab Unicron up there. I love the Metroplex going on. And he's been collecting every single bit as long as I have. So he's got a ton of stuff to swap out. Tom, thanks so much for showing me your display, and I look forward to every single time you swap this out. I want a ton of pictures. I just want to keep this record of how it looks, because this is a lot of fun, actually. So let me know what you think in the comments below. What do you think of these amazing collections? And for the 14,000 sub special, I'm going to have that up on Facebook. I'll have a link down below where you can submit your pictures 
hopefully 14,000 subs come soon, sooner than later. Like and subscribe. Hit the hammer hanger. Ow.